Okay, everyone, welcome to our webinar. Uh, today's topic for the webinar is uh, project budget management in open air. So let's talk a little bit about project budgets in open air. And really, uh, whenever we're talking about budget management, there's really sort of three levels to look at. There's just a general total budget, um, you know, a million dollars, hundred thousand dollars, whatever. And then there's ways to break that down into categories like expenses versus labor and also across time frames to say that uh, you expect to burn money Q1 versus Q2 versus Q3. So if you think in terms of budgets, they typically are about money. <clears throat> but as we all know, with services, money uh, backs into hours, so to speak, and uh, money can be broken down and sliced and diced in different ways. So uh, budgets contribute a lot to things like forecasting and understanding how we're doing against plan. Um, budgets also uh, give us information about how we're looking to attain goals based on perhaps the type of services that we're planning to sell. Okay, So there's a lot of different ways to think about budgets and what's interesting and you may not be aware of it is Open Air actually tracks different types of budgets in the system and that's what I'm going to start off talking about is the different types of budgets that you have available in Open Air. So the first budget, and this is sort of the beginner budget, I like to say, uh, the first budget is just using that simple field that's sitting there on the properties page in the projects module. In the projects module, the properties page, there's a budget field. And if you can type into that field, you have what's known as, uh, in my, and this is my terminology, um, the basic budget function. And you put a dollar value in there. Uh, when you put a dollar value in that budget field, there are standard fields on reports available, uh, budget versus uh, billing, for example, invoicing uh, income, budget versus income, uh, percent burn and remaining. Those are all standard fields in open air, uh, although you can create custom calculations. Uh, those are already in the system. It's been around for a while. But of course, one of the challenges in using this budget field is it's a single number. Uh, so some of you who have used, are using this single number, uh, you're faced with the challenge of, okay, now I get a change order. Uh, how do I reflect the change order? Do I just add to it? How do I know when it changed without having to run a report? Um, so that's, that's some of the downsides, but this is a, a practical and an easy way to use a budget feature in open air. Now, many of you may be using the budget functions that are found under the financials menu. And when you look at the financials menu, uh, there are potentially two budget values that you see in the drop down list. So the first one that you're showing on the screen here with just the word budget, um, that has, uh, is known as the transactional budget. And the transactional budget feature is an internal switch. If you're not seeing this as available in your system, um, first off, it has to be enabled by project stage. And uh, if you don't have the option to turn on the budget feature, then there's a switch that you have to ask for from NetSuite support to be enabled so that you can use this budget feature. Um, what's interesting about this budget feature, this has been around for quite some time, and it allows you to have multiple records that represent your budget. And with each of those records, you can actually add other descriptive information such as a budget category. Uh, is this a change order? Is this initial funding? Or is this a credit? Um, you have a budget date, so you can see when something happened as far as the budget being enhanced. And you can also add the service field, which is the same field that's on the task form or your timesheet form or your billing rules uh, and revenue rules that you see um, so that you can do holistic reporting financially from both a budget and an invoicing and revenue perspective by using the service feature. Now, the third type of budget in open air is known as the project budget. So this came out probably about four years ago now. And this project budget feature is a cost planning tool. Okay, um, There are many ways to use this. I, I'm very excited about this feature because there's, there's a lot of ways to think outside the box using this project budget feature because it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of tracking hours or money it gives you time dimension. It gives you categories. Um, so labor can be by service and by job code, expenses by type. Um, but it is a cost planning mechanism, and it's a much more 
you know, with more features comes more functionality in there, more options. You can already see on the screen the difference between this um, the single little line that I'm going to show you examples of later and this more of a spreadsheet type view. Now the project budget feature allows you to uh, track costs, so the cost of hours, the cost of expenses or expected expenses. It provides a markup, so you have a percentage uh, action that can represent a type of billing uh, in the system. Uh, it does have the ability to break things down in a very granular level. It can be at the project level, the phase level, the task level, and within each of those, it can have expenses, labors, and purchases if you have the purchases module available. And under each of those subcategories is when you have the lodging and airfare and labor being, you know, architect and database engineer. And the thing about the project budget feature on top of everything else is you could have multiple versions of the budgets. So that gives you more of a comparison and a versioning approach. Uh, you can designate one of them as the baseline. Uh, you can actually have an approval workflow so that you involve other people in looking at the budget. And you can only have one approved budget at a time. So whichever one is approved, if the previous, if there was a previous one approved, it's moved automatically to archived. Um, and and because, of, because of all of that sort of construct behind the feature, um, I'm going to go into some detail about different use cases that we've come up with at Top Step in working with you as con you know, consumers of this, that the project budget feature solves a lot of mysteries as far as running reports or doing forecasting that wasn't available in the past. So, uh, so I'm going to spend some time going through some examples and how we came up with those examples and what the use case is on each of these budget types. So the three budget types are the general or basic one, which is just putting a number in the budget field on the properties page. Uh, the transactional budget feature, which is more of a over time and little entries of how much money and you can categorize them with cate budget categories and service. And the third type is this very robust project budget feature, which we could do a whole webinar on just this functionality, um, but we're gonna have to move on and talk about Now, when we think about budget approaches, one thing I have to highlight is when the project budget feature came out, because it was using the term budget, there was some initial confusion on, is the budget feature planning revenue or is it planning costs or is it doing both? And really it's a cost planning tool with the ability to do some kind of billing anticipation because there's a, a billing function as part of project budget feature. Um, the way that I like to look at using these features, these features complement each other uh, in my mind because the transactional budget feature is really a great way of saying, what did we sell? How much did we sell? Did we sell $10,000 worth of consulting and $2,000 worth of expenses and $100,000 worth of license? Um, that's all customer funding or revenue. What the, what's going to be out of pocket from the customer? What am I earning as a company? And that transactional budget is really nice because that that's sort of you know your the money amounts that you're targeting earn as a company. And transpose that with the project budget feature, which says, okay, so how are we going to deliver that? What's the cost that we're going to invest to deliver that work um, in order to get that revenue or earn that that customer funding? And by combining these two together, you actually get a full picture then because you can see what your revenue targets are. Do your cost planning and your burn, which gives you your forecast of burn of cost. And then you can pull your actual cost in to see if you're running hot or cold on the cost. And of course, you can pull your actual revenue and um, earnings in, which gives you the ability to see if you're going to be coming in at your expected revenue targets and then um, be able to do margin reporting. So, so these actually, I, I like to suggest using both of these functions. Um, the budget feature for some of you, you may have that automatically get created as part of the sales cycle or the project setup. And then the project budget feature becomes something that the project manager uses. But I'm going to take you into some use cases now so that you get some ideas of, you know, what would, what would be a good thing to use both of these four or one of the other four. Okay. 
So the first use case I'm going to focus on is the what if I get an initial budget and initial funding, I want to break that down by category, and then I do an amendment or a change order to get additional funding for that, um, for that project. This is a pretty common scenario in services, as we all know. Um, so the transactional budget uh, feature is a good option for this. And the reason is, is that there's a date field on the transaction record. When you create the transaction record, you put the date in of when this budget applies to this project. Um, so when you do reporting quarter over quarter or year over year, you can see where the budget uh, is increased based on the date of that new transaction. Um, you can also enable the budget category field so that you have a way to say, okay, this amount of money is for labor, this amount of money is for expenses. Uh, and with anything else, just like anything else in open air, the categories are completely up to you. Uh, in our test environment, which I'll bring you into here, well, we have categories set up to track like a very basic set of budget types. Uh, expenses, hardware, labor, licenses. And then we have some change order versions, change order expenses, change order labor. And what that gives us the ability to do is we can run reports on budgets and we can actually break down when was certain budgets, uh, when did certain budget apply to the to this project? When did they get added to the project? Okay. And all that gives us the ability is to you know do reporting based on, you know, I earn, you know, if I earn $100 million in expenses, but it's all passed through, I've just made zero money in my company. So there's a, a usefulness in being able to track the categories. Uh, <laughs> uh, likewise, there's a service field as well that you can enable. And I like to enable this because the service field, and some of you have renamed it to other stuff, um, but the service field to me is a really nice, uh, glue reporting value because that service field ties things like time and billing and revenue and of course budgets now all into the same report. So you can actually run a report, group it by a service and have all of these different uh, tables be related together simply because they share this one, this one value. Okay. Um, so you can actually on the uh, project uh, transactional budget feature, you can set a service, it's not required. Of course, you can make it required, but you can set a, a, a service on there so you can see what it looks like. Um, I'm just gonna open up one that is actually the driver for our little webinar here. You can see I have a number, number of uh, budget entries. The first budget was approved on December 29th, 2016, had uh, various types of labor in there because of the way it was quoted. And then there was a, an amendment or a change order uh, back in 2017, which added some more information. And if I open up any of these items, you can see the simple form. What's the date? What's the money? Of course, currency, if you have a multi-currency environment. What's the budget category and what's your service? Okay, and the service is the same service that you see in your billing rules. So this, just simply by doing this, you, you get a full, picture of your budget, but you also can see when the change order happened from a money perspective. And this total value here, this 251,400, is what displays in that budget field on the properties page. Uh, when you have this transactional budget feature enabled, you no longer can just type something in this field. You have to actually um, find it here really quick. You'll see it's a read-only field. So I know when I'm working with many of you on questions and I open up your project properties, if I see that this is read-only, I completely assume that the transactional budget feature is enabled. It's just connected that way. Oh, and by the way, I'll take questions at the end of the, the webinar. So let's think about another use case uh, is what if we were wanting to do like proposals? Uh, so we want to do a costing plan and usually you sort of back into what's the price that you need to put on a, a proposal for a customer based on how much it's going to be delivered, who's going to work on it, that kind of thing. So the project budget feature is actually something you may want to consider because it is very much like an estimation spreadsheet. Many of you have that in your sales cycle. Uh, if you don't use a like a costing system or a sales tracking system and you did something directly in open air, 
a budget feature could help help you with that. Um, here you would basically use the cost of labor, the actual cost of expenses and so forth, and you would use the percent profitability field, which is something you can see here in the screen, this middle screen here. If everyone's cost rate was $85 an hour and I did a profitability of 40%, I would have to bill out the labor that I'm quoting at 119 in order to get a 40% profitability. So if you think in terms of that, what you can do is you can use this budget feature to sort of plan out the hours that are going to be needed over time. Um, the hours can then be multiplied by the cost to get up with the total cost. And then you can add your profitability level in there to figure out your rate and your total billing. Of course, um, you probably have bill rates that you want to use as well. We're going to talk about that in a second. But this is a, this is a pretty simplistic approach to using it for proposals, for example. And um, the other nice thing about the, this sort of base, this uh, project budget feature is you could have multiple versions of this. So you could actually have, here's was our initial guess. Here's version two of the, of the scoping. Here's version three of the scoping. Here's version four of the scoping. And that gives you the ability to sort of compare and contrast different versions of the budget and then decide which one you want to move forward with. And you actually have the ability to tag that as a baseline. So that could be your as sold baseline, for example. Uh, so that when your project manager takes over and it's a closed deal, they could start their own versions of the budgets and be able to compare that to the, to the baseline. Uh, so, so many of you may not have played with the project budget feature too much, but the project budget feature, um, when you create a budget, okay, project budget, it gives you basically uh, the ability to say, you know, give it a name, give it a date. Uh, the date doesn't really impact anything because the budget itself has a timeline. Uh, you identify which level of budget uh, applies, and then you can you have the option to put a cost plan in here. You don't have to. Uh, you can tell it what kind of labor costs are driving it as a service based or job code based. Um, if you want to import your project plan, you can with task assignments, and all of that brings you into an actual budget entry, and the budget entry then is like a spreadsheet. And like I said, it has that multiply value to see what the um, what the total cost is going to be in the uplift. If you want to use the uplift, you don't have to. That's the beauty of this feature is that depending on what you need to do, you actually will have the ability to, whoops, that's not good. Yeah, you will actually have the ability to use the functionality as you need to in the system. There you go. Now it came through. Uh, like I said, I could spend the whole webinar just talking about this feature, but we do have to move on, unfortunately. Um, another option is to use it for a revenue plan. I do have quite a few customers that are trying this out, revenue plan for delivery burn tracking, um, because what Open Air provides is not only the ability to have a budget, but you'll see that there's a link called actuals. And when you click on actuals, it brings the actual cost into the system, actual um, expenses into the system. Um, in fact, what, uh, what some customers are doing is instead of using the cost rate as the rate to be used for your delivery plan, um, they're using the, the, project, the project budget to do their um, the delivery plan based on their bill rate, not their cost rate, their bill rate. And uh, I am happy to say TopStep has a script that we have built and uh, is used by a few customers where uh, the rate card that's on the project is driving the rates uh, based on job codes in the project budget feature. And that gives you the ability to sort of do a forecast, but you're doing a forecast based on a spreadsheet. You're not doing a forecast based on things like bookings, for example. Um, so it's another way to control uh, forecasting, another way to control budget uh, projections, not relying on the charge projections field and the, and the billing rules and stuff like that, you can actually just type it into a spreadsheet, which I know, I know some of you have always wanted to be able to do that in open air and you, the budget feature actually gives you that capability to do that. Um, if you did like an actuals value inside the budget uh, feature, it brings the actuals in so you can see how the plan is going, but you can also do the actuals um, by just using a report. So you can pull the budget features, uh, the budget reporting values into a report and then pull the actuals from your invoicing, for example. 
So you do have lots of flexibility here between reporting and the feature itself on how to display the data in the system. Um, an interesting uh, challenge that was given to me uh, by a customer that we solved with also a, another scripting option was uh, to be able to track resource plan changes over time. Somebody has shifted the entire schedule two weeks or added somebody that we didn't have before. How do I know as a resource manager that they've made changes to the plan? Um, so we actually use the project budget feature to solve this by using a two script solution um, one script you would uh, enable to say, okay, I want this project to now start having weekly baselines of the bookings brought into open air, uh, into my project. So you basically turn on an auto create switch, uh, which allows the, the auto create script to say, okay, I have to capture the first baseline. And then I tell the second script, every week make sure you grab the next baseline for me so i have something week over week to compare in a report and then um, the way that the budget feature said you have multiple versions you actually have the option to show every single project budget in a report and then you can compare them side by side and if you add color coding um, now you really get a report like this so this is quite colorful um, you probably wouldn't go to this extreme but you can see how the the subtotals are the names of the project budgets the script gives it a date time stamp so we know how to keep things in order and you can see all you have to do is look over time to see something shifted something didn't shift something shifted something didn't shift and this gives you the ability to see what has changed over time for a project if they're given a weekly schedule for example um, not ideal for those of you who have very short projects they're only a week or two long but if those of you who have three month project or four month projects where you really need to keep an eye on how those schedules are shifting as they ripple into other big projects um, this might be something you want to consider another thing to think about and this was another solution again you guys bring us the challenges and we kind of come up with the solutions but i got to tell you the project budget feature is coming to come up multiple times um, the a revenue plan and being able to graph a revenue plan. So before the project budget, I always used to handle this. Um, this is something you've seen this on our, our dashboard reporting webinars quite often. Um, this, uh, this dashboard graph used to be run by having billing rules set up. They were hard coded. So I'd do a forecast with charge projections and it would be like this much money is my revenue plan every month. Um, but I don't have to rely on the billing rules anymore. I can use the project budget feature and the project budget feature um, gives me the ability to say, okay, so what is my plan? What is my revenue plan for the year? And I can put month by month what my labor revenue plan is. It doesn't really matter what the service is or the job code. I just want a money amount because that's going to give me the ability to have that be part of the reporting value in the system. Uh, and you basically you can establish a project project can be like a budget project by department by team whatever you need it to be and you fill out the budget and you tell it what's the what's the amount of money um, this is where you define what does this money mean is it revenue is it cost whatever um, but for a revenue plan it'd be revenue so you could put uh, money amounts in and then you could add that field to a graph so that you can see your actuals versus your revenue plan over time um, being um, as you earn it throughout the year. Okay, so a nice way to sort of set that up once a year instead of using the old fashioned um, billing rule approach that I used to use. Now, all of those are all money based, and all of those have some kind of time dimension or category uh, dimension. But the next one and the last one, I think, is, is a unique scenario uh, that we came to have to uh, work with the customer on where um, you have a forecasting capability in open air and many of you earn revenue on a percent complete basis. Now, the percent complete control in many times is approved hours over planned or approved hours over, um, over uh, <laughs> EAC, ETC, estimated, sorry, could not pull the word. Um, but in some cases, you don't really have, although you, you have a timeline control, you, 
you want to have more of a spreadsheet control. And so I was uh, challenged by a customer to say, I want to control what percent complete I should be hitting each month. And I want to control it in some kind of data entry way. I don't want to have to deal with the bookings and or the task assignments or dates. I want to be able to say on this on this month for August, I should be 50% complete. Um, so I again came back to the project budget as a solution. And actually the, the solution ended up being take the project budget feature, but plan out 100 hours at a cost of one dollar an hour so you're planning out 100 that was the key 100 and whatever the timeline is that you need to to spread that 100 across as long as you spread out the 100 that as 100 hours you have a, an ability to create custom calculations based on that project budget to come up with a percentage value and then if you use that percentage value to multiply by the budget it should say Here's how much revenue you should earn this month. Okay. So, like in this, in the report that I set up that's on the screenshot uh, on the slide, you can see how, like, Q1 of 2018, this project was supposed to be 13% complete, which would have earned $32,000, but the actual invoicing amount was only 19. So, we were falling short based on where we wanted to be from a percent complete perspective. But I used the budget, the project budget feature with this along with the budget feature to come up with the budget amount and then the percentage. So how did I actually do this behind the scenes? Um, the key is setting up the project budget feature for these types of projects. And of course, all of the examples that I've given you, you could actually mix and match all of these project budget examples. But of course, you can't really combine more than one on the same project. You'd have to sort of decide what kind of projects and use what kind of techniques. But as you can see the top here, the project budget feature has the $100 planned at a dollar, uh, dollar an hour cost. So as long as I planned out the full 100, I planned out my percent complete. And then I would use a custom calculations to take the budget, project budget labor hours divided by 100. So I get some kind of like, you know, percentage multiply. And then the revenue forecast is just that percentage times the project detail budget. So that gives me my money amount. So now I have a way to control a percent complete by just adjusting my budget and system. Of course, if you go over 100% or under 100%, your numbers are not really gonna match. So it's, you're really, it's a process behind the scenes as well. So I hope this has given you some ideas, some interesting ideas on the project budget feature. It's not just a spreadsheet to track hours and costs. There's many more options to think about. Um, look and see what you need as an organization to support reporting planning forecasting uh, estimations all those things that you use spreadsheets for see if perhaps the project budget feature can provide some information for you because my big thing is always think outside the box when you get a new feature because there's lots and lots of options available for you in open air <laughs>